Good evening, everyone. Here's another short video about uh, progress of uh, Python 68K board. As you can see, board is uh, assembled. And um, I went through a couple of iterations. The first version was um, the board that was just holding uh, pins uh, in the active low for PyStore or for 68K. And I ended up um, kind of setting this up successfully. But uh, then I've decided to go to a final version of the board that actually will disable the uh, CPLD uh, latches, uh, level shifters and uh, Raspberry Pi because there's no reason for this subsystem to be powered on while 68K is running. Uh, simply saves a little bit of power and a little bit of heat, removes a little bit of heat from the from the board. Um, but the good news is, uh, thanks to this little board, now I figure out how to keep uh, the pins uh, active uh, active low for either of these systems. So uh, there is no really a need to power down any of these subsystems, as far as I can tell. But Long story short, uh, this is the version 1.2 that I have assembled. Uh, I will submit uh, Geber files now for 1.2, which is going to be a production board. I have a couple of changes. I made a mess with um, actually a mistake uh, regarding these some of these pins here for, for this particular level shifter. So you will see budge wires on the, on the board. So that's corrected. And I also corrected some of the um, indicators here for the for the power rails. Okay, so having said all that, this is the uh, 3D model of the board, and not much has changed. I still have uh, CPLD in the middle, latching system in the, here uh, next to it, then uh, level shifters for the signals that require level shifting, 3.35. And then here there is a um, switch, a physical switch. So you can choose between 68,000 and uh, Pi Storm, and or rather Raspberry Pi as an emulator of 68,000. Um, and everything else that came uh, with uh, Pi Storm, the, the difference is a little bit of logic here for holding the pins uh, active low when needed, depending on the selection. And uh, there is a little bit of logic here uh, for these LEDs. And the LEDs are for halt uh, reset. And first two are for the Pi Storm and uh, second two are for 68,000. So you can actually see which uh, um, chip or uh, let's say which CPU rather is um, being hold and uh, which one is active. The one that's active is actually with the LEDs. They're, they're not uh, powered on. So on the other side, uh, pretty much standard thing, there is a little bit of decoupling, some tantalum capacitors. Now we have a fuse as well. And then there is a, uh, this part is for inverting the signal. So we don't look at active low when uh, we want to see if the signal is um, active or we'll see it in high state. So that's why I just inverted this um, signals for the halt and reset. This was actually a good move because this helped this helped me with the initial testing and debugging, determining the um, uh, values for these um, resistors here and measuring the signal levels for halt, halt and reset. So that's, that's the anatomy. That's pretty much it. Uh, the size is the same as the initial design and uh, that that's pretty much um, it i'm quite pleased with the form factor and um, aesthetics so that's um, the result is pretty good i would say now looking at the setup itself here's my minimig i believe uh, 1.97 itx and uh, we have uh, pystorm 68k this is version 1.1. Uh, this is not a production version. I will make uh, another board that looks the same with uh, having required corrections here. Um, you will see this budge virus. Uh, we, this is the problem that I mentioned before. 
and um, that will be corrected. But even so, board works just fine. So let me show you. Now, if you take a look at here, uh, we this is the um, the switch. You can imagine that this is the the, the let's say a toggle switch between uh, 60k and PyStorm. Now I'm selecting PyStorm. I will turn on the board, and you will see the um, uh, reset uh, and halt signals. So 68k signals are still uh, active low, and uh, the blue the blue LEDs for PyStorm are now disabled. So that means that uh, PyStorm is working, and you can see the hard hard drive is uh, loading the operating system. It will take a um, couple of seconds. And um, yeah, operating system is up and running, and uh, we can check. Um, let's say um, I don't know, maybe CS info, and you can see that PyStorm is running. I believe this is M sixty eight K. Let's say speed. And yeah, you can see the performance is quite ridiculous here. Uh, chip speed 1.28, which is good. Minimic does this very well. And uh, now, if you want to remove, uh, sorry, if you want to switch to um, 60k CPU, of course, you, you can do that while the system is running. So be careful to power off the system first. And now I'm going to switch to a different position. You can just imagine that here in the auxiliary port, I will flip the switch. And also I was thinking maybe to, for the future versions to make something um, cool. Maybe uh, this switch can be somewhere here in the front and use some of those like aviation style, uh, maybe uh, uh, the toggle switch that has LED and, and stuff like that, something cool, right? I don't know if everyone is uh, up for that. So maybe I'm thinking to keep the option for the switch to be installed in the auxiliary port, or you can easily drill the hole in the aluminum of the back plate. Uh, this back plate is quite soft and very easy to drill, so if you want to do that, you can do that as well. If you want to keep an um, auxiliary uh, port or extension port rather empty, or if you use, if you use the port for something else, but. Anyhow, now I switch to 68,000 and when I power on, you'll see the 68,000 LED is on. Uh, this was before. And you'll see that uh, reset and halt um, signals are now not active anymore for 68,000. And of course, Minimig now is uh, booting, you can see the, the hard drive LED working. So that means the Minimig is booting operating system because now we're using a hard drive from, from this uh, SD card. And uh, yeah, there you go. The same thing, just uh, to compare uh, performance, we can go with um, this uh, SIS uh, info program. And let's try again. This is, I believe, um, Toshiba 68000 in its uh, HC version that runs about 30 megahertz. Uh, not too bad. It's almost as fast as Mega 3000 or, or rather about the half of the performance, slightly above. Uh, but definitely um, it's humming along very nicely. So yeah, there you go. Um, this is um, now easy and a simple way uh, for choosing between uh, PyStorm and original 68000. For me, this is very important. Uh, I ended up disassembling my case from time to time just to switch between this uh, super fast uh, variant of uh, CPU and original hardware that sometimes for nostalgic reasons I want to uh, use and play with. And um, it's perfect. Uh, I haven't had a chance to test uh, other accelerator boards. Uh, what's probably required is to have some extension here or a riser on this, in the slot so you don't hit the, uh, the Pi, Raspberry Pi, uh, which it's, it's, I don't believe it's a problem. But uh, in my mind, uh, this is the way I wanted uh, this uh, subsystem to be used with 68,000 CPU. 
because once you have uh, Pi Storm, there's no really reason to put 230 here or uh, anything like that, simply because Pi Storm is so powerful and fast that I mean, I don't know. Maybe if there is a need uh, for such a thing, um, we can consider that as well. Maybe setting up some sort of um, riser here to kind of because effectively Minimi has enough space. I believe it's. Uh, it's tall enough um, for such a thing. Uh, here there is um, probably three or four centimeters available. So anyhow, um, for now, I think this is perfect. Uh, so that's that. Uh, I'm going to order about uh, maybe, I don't know, 100 dish of these boards and start producing them here in Canada. And uh, as soon as the boards are available, I'll put these on mimic.ca in case you are interested you want to reserve one of these uh, boards uh, let me know the price i'm going to try to make price as low as possible because uh, 100 units um, i will try to get uh, parts from um, wholesale so uh, that's that i still don't know how much this board will cost uh, but because i i don't i don't see the numbers yet uh, in terms of parts but i will do my best to make as cheap as possible so anyone can purchase that also as promised uh, once this is um, on the minimic.ca i'm going to put the gerber files uh, online and schematics so you guys can also produce these boards yourself because uh, by storm is open source project as it uh, as it should be and as uh, you know it should keep open source hardware and software wise that's what's beautiful about it so anyone who wants to produce this um, can why not you know um, and also i wanted to make sure that uh, this is easy to produce uh, so all the all the components are 805 size and even with the uh, if if you have some um, SMD experience, uh, this should be e easy peasy. Um, even if it's your first project, uh, if you're patient enough, you might be able to do it. Uh, I think if you have a good equipment, solid in iron and good flux, it you know, wouldn't be impossible. I think. So that's that. Um, I hope I'll have the the parts here within a week. So within maybe 10 days, uh, the, the first units will be available on the website. And um, hopefully uh, you'll be happy with, uh, with, this, uh, with this little variant of, uh, of the Pi Storm. Again, um, thanks for watching and talk to you soon. Goodbye.